Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Resurrection Day. Amen. All right. Let's go to our Abba Father and we will get started. Abba Father, once again, we just want to thank you and praise you for this day. We thank you so much that we have a place to come to worship you in spirit and in truth. Father, I ask on behalf of this congregation and, and the, past, the pastor that you have your way this morning, Lord God. Yes. Lord Jesus, come and dwell with us this morning. Holy Spirit, come. And help us to learn what we need to learn today. Be with our beloved pastor as he brings the word for us this morning. Help us to have uh, our hearts prepared to receive what is coming forth this morning, Father God. I bind up the works of the enemy. I render them useless and powerless. And Lord, I, I just once again thank you for the empty tomb. I know it was rough on you, but you've done it for, for the love of your people, for the love of your, your sons and daughters that are present here this day. But I thank you so much for that empty tomb. Amen. And Father, once again, I, I just, I, I really uh, thank you for, for those hearts that are coming. Pray a hedge protection around those that, that are coming. Those that need a healing in their body, I ask that you, your healing virtue go to them. And bring them safe and bring them back healed, Father God. That they give a testimony as what you have done for them. And as always, Lord Jesus, we give you honor, glory, and certainly all of the praise. And we ask all of this in the mighty name of Jesus, whom we love. And we we declare it by saying, Amen. 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 So be it. All right. Once again, welcome everyone to New Life Fellowship uh, morning services. First time visitors, wave at me. Uh, we got a packet for those that... that uh, Come here for the first time, so uh, just raise your hand. We've got some folks in the back that will give you one. We just want to know who you are, where you're from, and uh, so we can kind of get an idea of who's, who's here. Amen? Amen. All righty. Uh, we have one announcement. There, there is a, a funeral uh, on Tuesday at 2 p.m. over here at, uh, at Grody. Funeral home off of 190. Uh, pastor Rogers going to be the officiating pastor. So that's <laughs> Tuesday at 2 p.m. at Grody Funeral Home. That's, that's for Andy Kelly. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. All right. If you'll please stand, we'll go to our Heavenly Father. We'll honor him this morning with our tithes, with our offerings, and as you stand, if you will bow your heads with me, please. Heavenly Father. Thank you for another chance for us to meet together in your house to worship you. Yes. Father, your word says in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, if I gave everything I have to the poor and even sacrificed my body, I could boast about it. But if I didn't love others, I would gain nothing. Father, I pray that all offerings given today are out of love. Father, we experience your blessings each and every day. Your blessings are always given to us freely and with ultimate love. Father, you loved us all the way to the cross. And we love you enough to give you what is already yours. We ask, Father, that these ties and these offerings be blessed today. We give you all honor, we give you all praise, and we give you all glory. We do it in Jesus' mighty name. And all the saints said, Amen. Amen. And bring your tithes and offerings. I want to go ahead and dismiss all the kiddos to their class back in the back, and I think they're going to have an <clears throat> Easter egg hunt. You're getting boiled eggs, remember the pastor. <laughs> Angel, and she made you crazy. Did you what? 
Johnny may always make you Always make you some eggs. Yes, ma'am. She did. Yeah. Well, welcome everyone to Resurrection Sunday. I want to give a shout out to those that have joined us on Facebook and also those that have joined us on YouTube later. We appreciate you being with us this morning. And we just pray that if you have a prayer that you need prayer about, if you'll contact us, send it to us, let us know. We'd be more than glad to pray and believe God with you. Amen. Amen. We appreciate your support. And we appreciate your prayers. I want to give a shout out to Gene and Fred in San Antonio. I pray that you're watching us this morning. I pray y'all have a beautiful Resurrection Sunday. And Janelle and Dan, they also I appreciate them being with us this morning. I was going to give a shout out to my sister Kathy and my brother-in-law Lynn, but they're here with us this morning. Amen. Amen. And my Nephew and his wife, Seth and Robin, I thank Woo! God for them. But they're over here with us this morning too, amen. And again, thank everybody for being here and coming and sharing your Resurrection Sunday with us this morning, amen? amen. amen. And church, I want to thank God for taking care of us and protecting us and all those that belong to this church all through this COVID thing. God has just been awesome, amen. church, amen? amen? Let's give him a great big praise, amen? amen. Still in control, he's still on the throne. Praise Amen. God. Amen. All right. Church this morning, let's hope our Bibles will make our confession this morning. Say it like you mean it, mean it like you say it. This is the word of God. This is the word of God. I have what it says I have. I have what it says I have. I can be what it says I can be. I can be what it says I can be. And I can do what it says I can do. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I'm a winner. I'm not a winner. I'm a doer. Not just a hearer. So I'm a doer. Not just a hearer. In Jesus' name. All right. The Bible says we're all part of the body of Christ. So turn to somebody point behind you next to you and say, Thank God you brought the rest of my body this morning. Church this morning, I want you to turn me to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. <laughs> 1 Corinthians chapter 15. As you turn there, the Bible says, Mary Hart does good like medicine. So I'll have you some medicine this morning. Remember, this is just human story. So please don't be offended. Another elderly lady said, I'm never lonely because I have four men in my life. I get up as Charlie Horse. I spend the day with arthritis. <laughs> I dine with willpower. And I go to bed with big game. <laughs> As I get older, I realize I talk to myself because sometimes I need expert advice. Amen. Sometimes I roll my eyes out loud. Amen. I don't need anger management. I need people to stop teeing me off. <laughs> Come on. My people skills are just fine. It's my tolerance of idiots that needs work. Yep. The biggest lie I tell myself is I don't need to write that down. I'll remember it. Yeah. When I was a child, I thought nap time was punishment. Now it's like a mini vacation. Yeah. Even duct tape can't get stupid, but it can muffle the sound. <laughs> Wouldn't it be great if we could put ourselves in the dryer for 10 minutes, come out wrinkle-free in three sizes? Yeah. Yeah. All right, last one. Getting lucky means walking into a room and remember, remembering why I'm here. Yeah, amen. Some of y'all relate to that one, amen? Yeah. All right. Being late to come home after work, yet again a husband calls his wife. He says to her, listen, I'm really sorry. I know I'm already late to come home. Do you remember that jewelry store where we went the other day? Wife says, yes. <laughs> Husband says, well, I'm at the bar right across from it. <laughs> <laughs> That'll get you in trouble, amen? All right. First Corinthians chapter 15, beginning at verse 12. I'm going to read this to you from the Living Translation. 
But tell me this, since you believe what we preach that Christ rose from the dead, why are some of you saving, saying that dead people will never come back to life again? For if there's no resurrection of the dead, then Christ must still be dead. And if he's still dead, then all our preaching is useless and your trust in God is empty, worthless and hopeless. And we apostles are all liars because we have said that God raised Christ from the grave. And of course, that isn't true if the dead do not come back to life again. If they don't, then Christ is still dead and you are very foolish to keep on trusting God to save you. And you're still under condemnation for your sins. In that case, all Christians who have died are lost. And if being a Christian is of value to us only now in this life, we are the most miserable of creatures. But the fact is that Christ did actually rise from the dead and has become the first of millions who will come back alive again someday. Aren't you glad he rose from the dead? Amen. Amen. Church, this sermon looks at Easter and the resurrection of Jesus Christ and its life-changing message that our sins are forgiven, that we have a purpose to live out through the power and the promises of Christ and that our eternal future is secure in heaven. Amen. Today, many people are going to be celebrating what is known as Easter, which is about the resurrection of Christ and not about a bunny rabbit laying eggs. Right. Okay? Amen. There were three stupid guys who just died there at the pearly gates of heaven. And St. Peter tells them they can't enter the gates if they they can enter the gates if they can answer one simple question. St. Peter asked the first man, What is Easter? The man replied, well, that's easy. It's a holiday in November when everybody gets together. He's turkey is thankful. <laughs> Wrong, said St. Peter. He proceeds to ask the second man, what is Easter? The second man replies, no, Easter is the holiday in December when we put up a nice tree, exchange presents to celebrate the birth of Jesus. St. Peter looks at the second man, shakes his head in disgust. He looks at the third man and says, what is Easter? The third man smiled and looked at St. Pete in the eye and says, I know what Easter is. Easter is a Christian holiday that coincides with the Jewish celebration of Passover. Jesus and his disciples were eating at the Last Supper, and he was later deceived and turned over to the Romans by one of his disciples. The Romans took him to be crucified and stabbed in the side, made him wear a crown of thorns, and he was hung on a cross. He was buried in a nearby grave, which was sealed off by a large boulder. Every year, the boulders move aside so that Jesus can come out. If he sees his shadow, there will be six more weeks of dinner. <laughs> Listen, Easter is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. It's the greatest event of all time. It's the most powerful event in all of history. It's more powerful than volcanic eruptions, devastating earthquakes, floods, hurricanes. Tsunami or a nuclear explosion all put together. In fact, it's more powerful than Superman. In fact, all of the rest of the Bible was written around this event. That's how important it is, church. And the reason I say this is because the resurrection of Jesus caused history to be split into two parts BC and AD. Now, that's what I call powerful. Amen. Amen. In fact, it's so powerful that it can change the direction and the course of our lives. Yes. Yeah. I don't know about you, but, but I was going in one direction. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, I met this resurrected Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah. And my life turned around yeah. and has never been the same. Yeah. He changed me the moment I met him. He continued to change me as I continue to walk with him, church. Amen. We need to realize no one's perfect. I don't care if they stand behind a pulpit. I don't care what. None right. of us are perfect. Come on. Amen. We need God. We need the Holy Amen. Spirit working on us every day Amen. to change us to make us more and more like him. Amen? Amen. Now, some of you may have caught a discrepancy in what I said. Because B.C. and A.D. are divided by Jesus' birth and not his resurrection. But let me just bring up this proposition. If it wasn't for the resurrection, there'd be no need to record Jesus' birth. In fact, if it wasn't for the resurrection, there'd be no need to celebrate Christmas Amen. or any of us to come on Sunday morning to worship Him. Amen. In our society, a lot of people think, so what? What's the big difference? What is, what's the difference that Easter makes? How does it apply to me? 
So what if Jesus is alive? What's the big deal? How can something that happened 2,000 years ago have any bearing on my life today? Well, this same basic question they were asking in the city of Corinth back in the Apostle Paul's day. And it's something that needs to be answered in our day as well. How important is the resurrection? 1 Corinthians 15, verse 12 says, Now Christ has preached that he's been raised from the dead. How do some of you among you say that there's no resurrection of the dead? But there is, if there's no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty. And your faith is also empty. Yes, and we are found false witnesses of God because we testified of God that he raised Christ, whom he, whom he did not raise up, as if, in fact, the dead do not rise. For if the dead do not rise, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. Then also, those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If all, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are all men most pitiful. Paul begins by telling them that Jesus' resurrection is what holds the whole basis of our faith together. Amen. That if Jesus didn't rise from the dead, then all we believe and all we hold on to is useless and empty. Right. Think about that for a right. moment. Further, if Jesus didn't rise from the dead, then Paul and all the other believers were nothing but a pack of liars. And that humanity remains condemned because of sin. And that all those who've died have done so in their sin, and therefore they are eternally lost. But he doesn't stop there. Saying that if Jesus didn't rise from the dead, then all who believe should be pitied. Because their whole life and belief structure is a complete waste of time. But the good news is that Paul doesn't leave us there, church. He says in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 20, but now Christ is risen from the dead. Amen. And he's become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. He is alive, church. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Muhammad, Buddha, all those didn't come back to life. Only Jesus Christ came back to life. Come on, give God some praise. Listen, the resurrection is a proven historical fact. Amen. It's a matter of public record. You might say that it was headline news. And yet over 80% of people who say that they believe in the resurrection don't go to church. And believe it's, all, it's because they don't, they just don't get it, church. Yeah. They don't get the why that it's important. Gary and I were talking about this morning in our men's meeting. God said, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. He didn't say it was okay to sit home and watch, TV on, watch church on TV all the time. He said we need to assemble together. We need to come together as the body of Christ. You never know what God's going to do, church. And if you're not here, you're going to miss out what God's going to do. He may use somebody to minister to you, or he may use you to minister to somebody else. And you can't do it sitting at home. Amen. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Listen, people hear the coronavirus is coming and start panicking by, 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 excuse me, by buying toilet paper, hand sanitizer, and soap. <clears throat> this is the stuff that you should be buying year round. Y'all part, say amen, praise the Lord. Amen, praise the Lord. <clears throat> and the devil thinks he's going to shut me up. <clears throat> Listen. We should be buying this stuff year round. We should keep our hands washed. Yep. Yep. Jesus is coming too, but I don't see too many people running out to buy a Bible or going to church. Yep, Just right. saying. Come on. Listen, if you ain't got Jesus, all that hand sanitizer and soap ain't going to save you. Right. <laughs> Amen. So what difference does Easter make? What difference does the resurrection make? Because of Easter, because Jesus rose from the dead, number one, our sins are forgiven. Yes. Amen. Amen. I don't think there's a person alive that doesn't want to do over. Amen. You know where you have a brand new start in order to right all the dumb things that you've done in life. 
don't know about you, but I was thank God for a new do over because I did a lot of stupid things in my life. Some of y'all can relate, so straighten your little halos over there. Okay? All our failures, all our problems, all our bad decisions and our mistakes, along with all the stuff that's tortured us with painful memories and which we believe we have to pay for for the rest of our lives. Easter, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, is about having all these things forgiven and done away with. I don't know about you, but when I gave my heart to God, I felt like the weight of the world was lifted off my shoulders. Amen. All that stuff I'd carried, all the guilt and condemnation and all that stuff I'd carried for years, I was able to roll it off and give it to Jesus. Amen. Some of you this morning need to hear that. You've been carrying stuff for a long time. You've been letting the devil beat you up with bad memories, mistakes that you made. Yep. But God says, come to me. Amen. Bring them to me. Amen. Leave them at the foot of the cross. Put them under the blood. You don't have to carry them anymore. I'll carry them for you. Amen? And the Bible says, and you being dead in your trespasses, the uncircumcised of your flesh, he's made alive together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. Say all. All. All trespasses. Colossians, Colossians 2, uh, verse 13. And then he goes on to say in Colossians 2, 14, that Jesus wiped them out and take them out of the way, nailing them to the cross. In J.B. Phillips' translation, it says, He has forgiven you all your sins. Christ has utterly wiped out all the damning evidence of broken laws and commandments, which always hung over our heads and has completely annulled it by nailing it over His own head on the cross. Are you hearing what I'm saying this morning? All this stuff that we're carrying, we don't have to carry no more. He paid the price for it. He took it. He nailed it on Himself, church, so you and I don't have to carry this stuff no more. The devil wants you to he wants you to carry condemnation. He wants you to carry guilt. Because yep. that's an open door for him to get into your life. Yep. And do what he does best is kill, steal, and destroy. But God says you don't have to carry that no more. Listen, your family may not forgive you. Your friends may not forgive you. But Jesus Christ has forgiven you. And you need to get a hold of that this morning. Amen. Woo! stand before God, I'm going to stand before Him. I'm not standing before you. You're not standing before Amen. me. Amen. 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 Listen, Jesus paid the full penalty for our sin when He became that perfect, sinless sacrifice. And by His death, He accomplished what God had planned from the very beginning when He said, it is finished. Yes. We talked about that in our Bible study this morning. It's finished. He came and fulfilled all that God asked him to do. Yes. He made a way for you and I to come boldly to the throne. You know, in the Old Testament, they couldn't even go into the presence of God. Only the high priest. And when he'd go in there, they would tie a rope and put a little bell on it and tie a rope around his ankle. Because if he went into the presence of God with sin in his life, he would drop dead. And they'd have to drag him out. Yeah. Church, we don't have to worry about that. Jesus made a way for you and I to come boldly before the throne of grace anytime, anywhere, and God will meet you right there. Oh, come on, that's worth a shout. Amen. Listen, what Jesus meant by those words that his task, his work, and God's purpose were completed and fulfilled. Therefore, when we, you and I, accept Jesus Christ in our hearts, asking him to be our Savior and our Lord, we can have the same assurance that Apostle Paul had. Romans 8, he said, There is now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Amen. We carry condemnation. Why are we carrying condemnation? If you're in Christ Jesus, you don't have to carry it no more. The devil can't come up and accuse you of this because it's under the blood. I don't have to carry my guilt. I don't have to carry all that condemnation, all that weight. Amen? Amen. He said those who walk, and every day we talk about this in the morning, every day you have a choice. You can walk in the Spirit or you can walk in your flesh. Amen. 
If you walk in your flesh and you live according to your flesh and you have a of your flesh, then he said that's going to bring condemnation and it's going to bring destruction in your life. But if you walk according to the Spirit and you do what the Holy Spirit's telling you to do, you do what the Word of God's telling you to do, there is no judgment, there is no condemnation against you. And listen, just because you walk in the Spirit doesn't mean you don't stumble and fall sometimes. Right. And when you stumble and fall, don't let the devil get up on you and start to, oh, I see how you ain't going to make it. I knew you wasn't going to make it. No, you get back up because Jesus is sitting right there reaching down to pick you up. You get right back up and you begin to tell him what the word says. I may have fallen. He said the, a righteous man is going to fall seven times, but he shall rise. Amen. 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 Come on. The devil, Joy and I bought a t-shirt and on that t-shirt said the devil thought he had me. When he saw my head bow until he heard me say amen. 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 Woo. Listen, if you have a secret sore, a burden, or a loss, an aching need for healing, hang it on the cross. Amen. If you if worry steals your sleep, makes you turn and toss, if your heart's feeling heavy, hang it on the cross. Every obstacle to faith or doubt you come across, every prayer unanswered. Hang it on the cross. Amen. For Christ has borne our brokenness and dearly paid the cost to turn our trials to triumph. Hang it on the cross. Amen. 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 Then it brings us to our second difference that Easter makes. Our lives have a purpose. Yes. Amen. What was the purpose of Jesus' death? Jesus said, I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. Church, he came to save it the first time. When he comes back the next time, he's coming back as the judge. Yeah. Okay? Paul said, but God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were yet still sinners, Christ died. So think about it. Christ died. While you and I were out doing our own thing, yeah. while we were still in dead in our trespasses and sin, Jesus came and died for you. Amen. He died for me. Amen? Amen? Amen. And again, Paul says, if you confess your mouth to the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised from the dead, you will be saved. Romans 10, 9. If you believe it and you confess it, he said, you shall be saved. Now, a lot of people have no problem confessing him as Savior. But a lot of people have trouble submitting to the authority of God and making him Lord. I'm just saying he wants to be your Lord and your Savior. Yeah, yeah. I said this the other night. A lot of us, we treat God this way. We're driving our life down the road and we put God over in the pasture seat. And everything is going good and we're good. And all of a sudden, all hell hits our life. What do we want to do? Here, God, you take the steering wheel. Right. Yeah. That's right. Church, he should have the steering wheel all the time. Yeah. We should be the passenger. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Come on. Amen. 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 Listen. It was the Father's purpose to send Jesus so that through his death, he would save all who would believe in him. And because Jesus rose from the dead, our faith is not empty. It is not useless, but it is alive. It is vital for eternal life. Amen. 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 And all because of Jesus' death and resurrection, just as he promised, we can have an abundant life. Third John says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in hell, even as your soul prospers. Yes. Your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotion. It's your choices. It's your thinking, it's your choices, and it's your feelings. Listen, as we learn to allow the Holy Spirit to help us with our thinking, yep. some of us, we got some stinking thinking. Amen. 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 We've had it for years. Amen. He helped begin to change the way we think about things. And when you begin to change the way you think about things, you're going to start making better choices. Yes. And when you start making better choices, you're going to learn how to control your feelings. Amen. There's a lot of Christians who love God with all their heart, but their feelings and their emotions get the best of them. You can come in and praise God, jump and shout and tell how great God is. Somebody step on your toes or say something about you, all of a sudden, we're out of the spirit, into the flesh. Y'all know what I'm saying, Amen. <laughs> 
But he said we can have a we can have abundant life. But it's up to us to do what is necessary so that we can start making the right choices, doing the right thing, Amen. and living our life the way God wants us to live it. If we do that, then you will have an abundant life. Amen. 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 John 10, 10 said, I come that they may have life and they may have it or abundantly. He said that they may. It's a choice. Do it God's way, you're having an abundant life. Do it your way, reap what you sow. Amen. Amen? Amen? Jesus came not only to forgive our sins and give us eternal life, which is more than any of us deserve, but he also came to give us an abundant life right now. A lot of people are waiting. Oh, when I get in the sweet by and by. Oh, when I get to heaven. God wants you to have a little heaven here on earth. Amen. 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 Some Christians go around trying to testify about the goodness of God. Oh, doom and gloom and agony. Man, I don't know. That's not going to win a whole lot of people to Jesus. Amen. You need to let people know I'm living a victorious life. I'm living that abundant life that God says I can have. Amen. That's what the world needs to see. They need to see the reality of Jesus Christ in his disciples and his followers' lives, church. It's time for us to quit being the, the beat down bunch. We need to be the ones that are triumphant, the ones that are resurrected, the ones that are alive. Amen. Listen. Before Christ came in my life, I had one purpose and one meaning for life. Take care of me. Do what self wanted. Please self. I didn't care about anybody else but me. Everything rotated around me. But then I met him. And my life changed. And my life is still changed. You know, this is where a lot of people in the world get mixed up. They think because you say I'm a Christian, you're perfect. No. You're forgiven. Amen. You're in the process. God is working on you. We are his workmanship. Amen. That means he's still work. I'm still under construction. Amen. You're still under construction. Yes. This is not Amen. the complete product. Amen. Okay? We're all going to make mistakes. We're all going to fall short. Amen. But God is working on you. He's working on us. Amen? Amen. How about you? But since I've changed my life and started walking with God, and I say I make mistakes every day, I fall short sometimes, but I do have a blessed life. I'm fixed to be 70 years old in August. Amen. 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 <laughs> but God has taken care of me. Amen. I'm blessed in my family. I'm blessed in my, my, my health. I'm blessed in my finances. Amen. I'm blessed with my kids. My kids are here in church with me. My family's here in church Amen. with me. Church, that's awesome. Amen. I tell you all the time, and not just because I'm a pastor. I've been where y'all have been. I've been out. In the, I worked construction for 45 years. I'm a most blessed man. I really have so much to be thankful for, church. And it didn't happen overnight. It's a process. You know, we look at people like Joyce Myers or, or Joel Osteen or somebody on TV. And, man, I wish I could be like them. Guess what? They didn't wake up that way, church. It was a process. Oh, come on. Give up some praise. Listen, society wants to, to sell us that, that we can't make it unless we have certain products. Unless you've got certain products in your life, you'll never be happy. You'll never be productive. I mean, how do we ever get along without the Ronco Salad Shooter? <laughs> Some of y'all don't even want to talk about it. <laughs> or how can we survive without the latest smart TV? Or smartphone? Or tablet or computer. I don't like smartphones. They're smarter than I am. <laughs> or how are we supposed to make it through life without Nike or Under Armour? Oh, have you heard the latest? Yeah. Rapper Little Nass has got some new shoes out. They're yeah. called Satan shoes. Yeah. Yeah. And they're got a, supposed to have a drop of human blood in them. They got pentagrams on them. Don't want to be that man. Now listen, it wasn't until I discovered clear and unscented or deodorant that I really understood the meaning of life. <laughs> Church, the reality is most people aren't really living. Instead, they're merely existing. They get up in the morning, go to work, come home, eat dinner, watch some TV or their computer, then they go to bed. Only repeat the scenario day in and day out. 
Sound familiar? Others, they take the King Solomon route. That is, they find their purpose through pleasure, prestige, and power. But what they don't see is that in the end, Solomon found it all useless and a complete waste of time. You can have everything this world offers. If you don't have Jesus, church, you ain't got nothing because all the other stuff can pass away. And then one thing's going to last is what you do for him, you in eternity with him. Amen? God created us for a purpose. He's got a plan. He had a plan before you and I were ever born. Amen. Ephesians 2 10 says, We are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. What did Jesus do? It says he went around doing good. You and I should go around doing good. Amen. He went around doing good and healing all those that were oppressed of the devil. You know, the Bible says that these signs shall follow the believers. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. When's the last time you laid hands on someone and exercised your right, your privilege, and your authority in Jesus' name? You did get quiet on that one, didn't you? Amen. Just saying. <clears throat> Church, the word workmanship in other translations means masterpiece. What is being said is that each of us are God's unique work of art. Therefore, God has a plan for our life, one that he wants to fulfill. The tragedy is that few have discovered it. But as you continue to grow together and walk with God, you'll learn what God's plan and purpose is for your life. He didn't create us just to exist. He created us to glorify him. Look at your work. That's what it says. Amen. Life is worth nothing unless I or you use it for doing the work that's assigned Amen. by the Lord Jesus. The work of telling others the good news about God's mighty kindness and his love. You see, while each of us have been uniquely designed by God, he has done so with his ultimate purpose in mind so that you and I could bring the good news to those that he puts in our circle of influence. There are people in your life that I'll never meet. There's people in my life you may never meet. People that we can influence. People that we can share the gospel with. And a lot of times we say, oh, they don't want to hear the gospel. You don't know. You don't know what that person is going through. Right. You don't know what's happened to them in the past. You don't know what they may be facing in the future. Right. You need to share the good news. Amen. And sometimes, yeah, you may get some doors slammed in your face. You may get some people that don't want to hear it. But you may reach that one person saying nobody ever. There was one guy said he was 40 years old, living in America, and no one had ever shared the gospel with him. 40 years in America. Amen? The question is, how do we do this? Through the power of Christ. Consider the power of Christ. He said, I lay down my life that I may take it again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down in myself. I have power to lay it down. I have power to take it up. John 10, verse 17. It was a resurrection that proved Jesus' power. The power over death. The power over the grave. The religious leaders that day, they, those who today were labeled as skeptics, they mocked Jesus. Hey, if you're true to the Son of God, come down off that cross. They wanted him to display his power. You know the greatest display of power? He stayed on the cross for you and I. He could have come down off that cross. And we'd never receive what he wanted us to receive. But the greatest power is being able to stay up there, being humiliated by the world, sinless, knowing you're not guilty. You didn't do anything to deserve it, but you stay on the cross because of the love of people that you had that you knew that your life would bring to Christ. Amen. You hear what I'm saying? We look at things backward. God had, He said, My ways are above your ways, my thoughts are above your thoughts. Amen. Jesus is going to do something greater and more powerful. He was going to let the Romans kill him and place him in the tomb. But in three days, he was going to show them true power is really all about what it's all about because he came back to life, proving to be who he claimed to be. I like that old song. Some of y'all may not, ain't no grave going to hold this body down. Amen. Listen, the really cool part, that same power that raised Jesus from the dead is available to us. 
Ephesians says, I pray that you'll begin to understand how incredibly great his power is to help those who believe in him. It's that same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in heaven. Same power, church. That same power that raised him from the dead can change your dead situations. That same power can change and transform your life no matter how messed up it is. That same power, church, can touch your family, touch your friends, touch your children, and turn their lives around. Amen? Amen. Amen. Brother Gary's getting hot here. You want to turn the air on? Listen. So not only do we have a purpose for our lives, but Jesus has given us this incredible power to live it out through believing in him. I can't live a Christian life. You can't live a Christian life without the Holy Spirit, without the power of God in our lives. Amen? A lot of people, well, I just can't live that life. No, you can't. But through God, all things are possible. Amen? Listen, it's the power to change what we cannot change. That power will help you change your habits. It'll help change your hangups. It'll help heal your hurts. It's a power to let go of the guilt. I carried guilt for many years toward my daughter because I was never the father that I should have been. When I was unsaved, it was all about me. I told you that. She'd come visit me. I'd just find some girlfriend or something to dump her off and let her stay with them. I didn't have time for her. I was too busy doing my thing. And I carried guilt for years and years. And she used that guilt against me. They know how to play that. But you know, it took God that set me free from that. I can't change who I was. I can't change the path of the father that I was. What I can do is from this point on be the best I can be in Christ. Amen. Amen. Good God for you. Church is the power to help us to get rid of those grudges. Amen. To get rid of that grief. Amen. To help us keep from being stuck in the past. It's a power to forgive others. Well, I just can't forgive that. God says you can. And God says, I had a lady the other day said, well, I hope someday you can forgive me. I said, well, I already forgive you. Yeah. Because if I don't forgive you, God can't forgive me. Amen. Amen. And God will give you the ability. Yeah, but you know how bad they hurt me. How bad they hurt him. It's the power to keep us going when all we want to do is just quit. Listen, God has been dealing with someone about something specific in your life. Something that's been blocking God from doing what he wants to do. And he's been dealing with you. And you know it's you because... You know he's got something specific in your life. And you know you need to get rid of it. You know you need to let go of it. But you've been holding on to it. And God said it's time. If you want me to do this in your life. If you truly want to be free. If you truly want to be everything that I want you to be. Then you're going to have to let this thing go. You know who you are. God's speaking to you this morning. Listen. That's why Paul can say. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens. Listen, along with the power of Christ, we also have his promises. Promises to help us live according to God's purposes. I said he's given us power. He's given us power to change. The Bible says in the last days that, that many are going to have a form of godliness, but they're going to deny the power thereof. Oh, they're going to look religious. They're going to build churches. They're going to go through the motions, but their lives are not going to be changed. Yeah. They're going to walk in a church door and they're going to leave out that church door just like they came in because they deny the power. Some people say, oh, I want to see a miracle. I can see a miracle. Listen, the greatest miracle you ever see is when somebody's life is changed. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. When they're out of and they're Amen. And he says he's given us his promises. He's given us his word. Whatever you're dealing with in life, he has given you word to stand on, to believe him for to come out and be victorious. And God's purpose is to glorify Him. We think God's purpose is to make us comfortable. Make us feel good. No, 
His purpose is whatever we do, whatever we do in this life, is to bring glory to God. Amen. Listen, some of those promises, John 14, 6 says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. There's only one way to God. There's not multiple ways. There's not many ways. There's one way to God. That's through Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. John 14, 14, he says, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. A lot of people take that scripture and say, well, I can ask God. He says, I can ask for anything I want. Let's say I'd like to have a mansion. I want a Cadillac. Uh, I want money in the bank. Uh, I want a beautiful wife or a good-looking husband. I want my kids to behave. Listen, he said, you can ask anything that's in line with the word that's going to bring praise to God. Okay? Come on, that's, that's a word of praise right there. Come on. Listen, Easter proves that God keeps his promises. And that's what Moses and the Apostle Paul is trying to tell us, church. God's not human that he should lie, not a human being that he should change his mind. He does speak. Does he speak and then not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? Numbers 23. No. For all the promises of God in him are yes and in him amen to the glory of God through us. God wants to fulfill His promises in our life. Amen. But sometimes we're the biggest hindrance. Yes. Wow. We've been talking about this in Bible study. People won't even say, won't even mention the name of God, don't go to church, don't pray, do anything, then when something bad happens, why did God let this happen? Yeah. Yeah. God gets blamed for so much that it's not even His fault, church. Right. Wow. Listen. Jesus is dealing with the most common malady known to humanity he makes his promise. He says, most assuredly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment, but has passed from death into life. Amen. You already have it, church. If you believe in Jesus Christ, he's your Lord and Savior, you have it. Amen. We're not waiting till the day we die. You got it right now. It's yours. Amen. Everybody's going to die. That's a given. Nobody's going to live this life forever. It is common and well understand that fact is no one really likes to discuss or talk about it. And that's because it scares us to death. But if I could say something without becoming too harsh, only a fool would go through life totally unprepared for something they know is going to happen. James 1.22 says, remember, it's a message to obey, not just to listen to, so don't fool yourselves. Like it, don't like it, believe it, don't believe it, we're all going to stand before God one day. If you're a believer, you're going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Amen. If you're an unbeliever, you're going to stand before the white, great white throne. But we're all going to give an account in this life. The writer of Hebrews says it's been appointed to everyone the time to die and after stand before God in judgment. So here's my question. Do you know where you're going to spend eternity? And what do you base that decision upon? What promise? We talked about this this morning. So many people are so wrapped up in just trying to get by day by day by day they're not being worried about eternity. If I can just get through tomorrow. If I can just get through the next day. I'm not worried about what's going to happen down the road. I'm not worried about eternity. We need to be worried about eternity, church. This life is brief. You never know when God's going to call your number. Or when something's going to happen, you're not going to be here anymore. And there's no purgatory. There's no middle ground. I don't, you search it out. Look it up. Find, talk to God. Let God take it. I don't care what you've been taught or what you've been told. There is no middle ground. You make the decision here and now while you're alive. When you die, you don't get to go back and do it over. Amen? Amen. The last point. Our future is secure. If I were to take a survey and ask if people were sure they're going to heaven 
The most common answer would be, I hope so. But forgive me if I'm wrong, but isn't that something we ought to be 100% sure about? Most people base their answer upon wrong information. Well, if you got saved when you were a child, unsaved always saved, and you can live like you want to. That's why I tell you all the time, don't take my word for it. Don't take some preacher's word for it. Go to the Bible. Find out what God says about it. Amen. This is your eternal salvation. Amen. Amen? Amen. A lot of people, like I say, base their answers on wrong information, wrong motives, and misunderstandings. Some people believe in salvation by sincerity. They say it doesn't matter what you believe as long as you're sincere. I once read about a pilot who built his own plane and sincerely thought it was fly, but he was sincerely wrong. <laughs> Others believe that salvation by good works. They believe that their good works will get them into God's good graces in heaven. But the Bible says, for by grace have you been saved through faith and not of yourself. It's a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Your good works are not going to save you. You should be doing good works because you are saved. Amen. 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 That's right. That should be evident proof that I'm walking with God. Yeah. But that's not going to get me into heaven. Then there's those salvation by subtraction. They believe they'll get in heaven by giving up stuff. Like smoking and drinking and cussing. And hundreds of other vices. But the Bible says there's a way that seems right to man. But its end is the way of death. Listen, there was only one. You can give up all you want to give up, and we should give up things that are harmful to us. God's not making you give up because He wants to be a bad God. He's making you give up because He knows the consequences. Come on, man. Amen. Amen. He knows the end result. Amen. But there was only one sacrifice given that we might be saved by. Amen. Not by us giving up stuff, but because Jesus Christ gave up His life and you accepted that sacrifice. Then there's some who take the route of salvation by ritual. They join churches. They say certain kinds of prayer. They perform certain rituals. But they say sitting in the church doesn't make a person a Christian just like sitting in a chicken coop doesn't make a person a chicken. <laughs> then there's salvation by heritage. They say they're a Christian because their parents are Christians. But John the Baptist confronts this sort of teaching. He says, do not think to say to yourself, we have Abraham as our father. For I say to you that God is able to raise up children to Abraham from these stones. Just because your mom and daddy goes to church doesn't mean you're going to be saved. Right, come on. It's a personal thing. Everyone has to open their heart and accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and as their Savior. Amen. And when you do that, there is a change that happens. On the inside. Not on the outside. If you're bald headed and you get saved, you're still bald headed. Come on. Okay? But there's a change in your heart. You have a new Lord, a new Savior. Then finally, those who believe in salvation by comparison. They say, at least I'm not Jim or Judy. At least I haven't killed anybody. But the Bible says it isn't wise but foolish to compare ourselves to others. Well, I'm not as bad as old Kenneth. I'm not as bad as Seth. That's not how we judge ourselves. Amen. This is your mirror. Amen. This is what you need to be looking into. This is how you judge yourself. Amen. Not by what somebody else is doing or somebody is not doing, but by what God is saying in His Word, church. Amen? Yes. Listen, salvation, I'm almost through for those who are watching the clock. Salvation, eternal life with God comes only through having a personal relationship with God. It's not a religious thing. You don't go to church and join the church and all, you're all good. No, you have to have a relationship with God. Amen. He wants to be intimate with you. He wants to fellowship. He wants yes. to talk to you. Amen. He wants you to talk to Him. Right. We're His kids. Sometimes I feel like my kids, the only time they talk to me when they want something. Sometimes we do God the same way, don't we? Sometimes we just need to go before God and not ask Him for anything. Just say, God, I'm just here. I just want to talk to you. I just want to spend some time with you. 
I just want to love on you and let you love on me. Amen. Amen? Amen. John 17, 3 says, and This is eternal life that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Blessed be God, the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. You and I have hope this morning because of what he did. We have hope of a new life. We have hope of an eternal life. What we could say is salvation is about what we know. It's about who you know. Listen. Greatest man in history had no servants, yet they called him master. Had no degree, yet they called him teacher. Had no medicines, yet they called him healer. Had no army, yet came spirited. He won no military battles, yet he conquered the world. He committed no crime, yet they crucified him. He was buried in a tomb, yet he lives today. His name is Jesus. Yes. Amen. Yes. My father took his son and seven of his friends to a carnival for his son's birthday. He bought a roll of tickets for each ride. He gave a ticket to each of his son's seven friends. About the fifth ride, another hand stuck itself out. And the father asked, who are you? The boy replied, I'm your son's newest friend. He said, if I was his friend, then his dad would give me a ticket as well. Now the father gave a ticket to his son and to his eight friends. Listen, one day we're all going to stand before God and he's going to ask, who are you? And why should I let you into heaven? Amen. Now we can answer, well, I was sincere in my beliefs. I did a lot of good deeds. I gave up drinking, smoking, cussing, and all that stuff. I went to church. I even got baptized in the process. I'm not as bad as Jim and Judy, and since my parents are Christians, don't I have a free pass? And God's going to say, sorry, no ticket. Amen. Or we could say, I'm your son, Jesus' newest friend. I accepted him as my Savior and Lord. And God's going to say, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your Lord. It's something we all got to face, church. We all have to make that choice. What difference does Easter make? Because Jesus died and rose from the dead, our sins are forgiven. That right there should be a thank you, Lord. Praise God. Amen. 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 Our sins are forgiven. Because of the resurrection, we have a purpose to live through the power and the promises of Christ. Because of the resurrection, our eternal future is secured in heaven. Easter's life-changing message is that we can have a brand new life and eternity with God. And that all of God's promises are true. Amen? Amen. Give God praise and glory. <laughs> Church, in just a moment, we're going to have an altar call. We're going to put a song on. We're going to have an altar call. I want you to be honest with yourself. The Bible says the truth. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Be honest with yourself. Be truth with yourself. If you got in your car today after leaving church, and you were to die, where would you spend eternity? Be honest with yourself. It doesn't matter what everybody else is doing, what everybody else is thinking. Where would you spend eternity? Are you going to spend it with God and be able to go see all your loved ones that have gone before you? Or are you going to go to hell and be separated from them for all eternity? We talked about this in our Bible study the other day. People who go to heaven, they don't look down from heaven and see what's going on down here. You know, while you've been taught that, the go to Ecclesiastes chapter 9. They don't see what's happening here because there's no sorrow in heaven. And if they look back here, they would see sorrow. They see things that happen and it would bring hurt and harm to them. So they don't see the stuff that's going on down here. That's one of the blessings of being in heaven. 
But those who go to hell, one part of the torment, they're going to know everything that they didn't do. They're going to know what happened. They're going to know all the opportunities they had, and they didn't take that opportunity. And they're going to know that for all eternity. I believe that's part of the punishment. You have a choice today. If the Holy Spirit is dealing with your heart this morning, all you got to do is invite him in. You know, when you come down, you're not joining the church. You're not coming to me. You're coming to God. And you're telling God, I need you in my life. I can't do this without you. I want you to be all of me. I want you to be a part of my life now. I need the help. Amen? Amen.